this is we're going to start talking about C4. And C4 plants have evolved. They've, they've developed uh, these organelles and uh, structures that involve mesophyll and then the bundle sheath cells. And the whole point of this is that they're trying to concentrate the carbon in the plant to maximize photosynthetic efficiency. Okay, and we're going to talk in the next slide of, of what's happening there when those small pores open and you're bringing in CO2, but you're also bringing in oxygen, right? We've got CO2 in the air, we've got oxygen in the air, but all we really want is the CO2. We need to fix that carbon. And so what happens here is that the sphartic acid is actually your carrier, your carbon carrier, that allows you to take the carbon that the plant's taken up and put it in a bundle sheath cell so it can be used to make photosynthesis. Okay? So I think there's, there's people out there right now, and, and there's competitors of ours, that will say, hey, we've got this carbon product, and it might be humic acid based, it might be whatever based, okay? And they're going to say, hey, this carbon is going to be great for the plant. The plant's going to be able to take it and fix nitrogen and all this and fix, fix the photosynthate and do all this stuff. And that, that's not true. It's got to be in a specific form. And in this case, it's aspartic acid to go into bundle sheath cell to be fixed. So with aspartic acid, we have that opportunity in warm season turf. And then on the back end, to take it back out, you need alanine. Okay? So that's a discussion for another day. Now, for our C3 turf, uh, we have this thing called photorespiration. And the C3 turf did not evolve. It's still kind of stumbling through. They're opening up their smaller pores, and they're taking what they get. And so what happens is the plant also takes up oxygen, okay? Now, that oxygen is not able to be used for photosynthesis, obviously, okay? So up to 25% of your photosynthetic process could be wasted in a C3 plant, okay? So what do we do here, and what are the options? Glycine is actually able to donate a carbon to turn O2 into CO2, basically. And it can go through the peroxisome or it can go through the cytosol and into the chloroplast. But at the end of the day, the take-home message here is that glycine can donate a carbon and take that wasted O2 and turn it into CO2. Okay, so when we're getting out there and we're doing trials with glycine and we're seeing just better overall health, you know, this is one reason why we're seeing this, okay? So this is, again, really deep science, but if we just make it simple on ourselves, you need aspartic acid to be able to fix that carbon in your C4 plant, and you need glycine to be able to help your plants out when it's taking up oxygen. So, Kurt, why don't you talk about what this means? And you know, again, that's very sciencey, very abstract. What does this actually mean, though? What does this What does this do to the turf at the end of the day when we're able to increase our uh, our carbon assimilation efficiency? Yeah, so let, let's talk about bringing together uh, all these processes that you talked about a little bit, George. I mean, increasing uh, photosynthetic activity um, through the use of glutamic acid, increasing nitrogen, nitrogen assimilation, which results in better protein production. And now we're talking about increasing uh, carbon assimilation, which leads directly to building more energy through photosynthesis. So. Um, and it's pretty exciting stuff because because when when we help the plant build more and more energy and more carbohydrates, it can divert some of that energy to building roots. And um, these pictures here help me tell uh, a story that uh, occurred this year. On the left, you see a sod strip, and that sod was was placed down in March um, on a on a green here in, in central Ohio. And uh, it was it was placed there to repair a hydraulic leak. Uh, I came back and visited the superintendent in in late July. It was almost August first. Uh, the picture on the right, where we stuck a probe in the ground there in that sod and pulled out uh, this core, and now you're looking at eight, seven, eight inches of roots. And the superintendent looked at me and he said, "Hey, you know this is this is sod. I would expect this from seed." Uh, a seeded turf, but this is, this is sod. I need to talk to George. I mean, are you telling me that, that your amino acid program is doing this much for the plant, or it's helping build that in, build energy, so so it's you know pushing roots like this? I'm like, well, hey, this is uh, this is your green. This is not a picture from a hundred miles away, there, bud. So, uh, pretty cool stuff. And um, you know, 